guys, I am Hard Grape and I'm Eggplant Grape and welcome back to another video on the Squidgy Reap channel. So today we will be explaining our engine project and how it's currently doing and the future of the project. So over here is our low temperature differential Stirling engine that we tried to make after our first steam engine failed and after our compressed air single piston engine also failed and will you guess what this engine also failed everything we made so far has currently failed but anyways let's explain how it works so anyways we hope that this engine will work by the power of air expanding when it's hot so what happens is when the air is when the piston is at the bottom which it is right now, the hot air will cause it to, it to expand. So anyways, this thing works by the, the, using the power of expansion of air when it's hot. So when the, the displacer is at the bottom, and by the way, the displacer is a huge um, disc made out of styrofoam inside of this big cylinder. When it's at the bottom, the hot air will, the um, hot plate will warm up the air and cause it to go up. And when it goes up, you can see this part of a glove. It also goes up and that is because the hot air pushes the cold air on top. And then the cold air has nowhere to go but that that diaphragm place and then the diaphragm is the actual thing which pushes the crankshaft and by the way this crankshaft has such a small crank radius that probably it could move it couldn't even move itself but we still thought that this was probably the most reliable way of getting motion but anyways after that um, the, the wheel will continue spinning and then it will force the displacer to go down and it's currently not going down because our Stirling engine sucks but um, yeah after that the diaphragm will lower and it will push the crank down even more and then after that the heat will cause the air to expand making the crank rise again, and so on. And that is how this thing should have worked. However, the diaphragm rises by so little that the crank, the tolerance of the hull and the, of, of the crank pin, it's, it's less than the tolerance, so it doesn't even move the crank. That is how weak this engine is. So yeah, that is why we gave up on this engine. And after that, we moved back on to the second engine design we made, which was this steam car. We played around with it a bit. We changed the wheels and we, we changed the traction. We even 3D printed a new crankshaft so that it would go backwards, but it still didn't move anywhere. And that was primarily because, well, it used up way too much air and that and that that means that any balloon that blows air into it will only blow for like 1 to 2 seconds which is not enough to test it and even when it was testing it didn't even move forward so yeah we gave up on this engine and then we searched online and we found a new engine design and that was this design that's currently missing two wheels. But anyways, um, this engine used up less air, which also meant less power, but um, still, it at least could run for over two seconds. And we did get it to run for a while. But while we were waiting for the balloons to arrive, we decided to um, change something in the engine so that it would run even smoother, and then it broke. And no matter what we could do, it would never be fixed. 
and we tried to fix it for like two days two days of non-stop 24 7 fixing it and it still didn't run even after we got this very powerful balloon it still wouldn't run so then we moved back onto this engine and we tried this balloon and it still wouldn't run so yeah and the lesson that we have learned is 3d printing stuff is does not make things that much easier so yeah in the future we might just stop making engines and instead just use motors but we were planning on making some sort of car that could drag something and we were planning to make an engine for it so that it would be cool looking because since we like technology a lot we thought that would just make it an extra challenge for us but after trying for so many months i think just using an electric motor is the easiest way to make a car so yeah it's kind of sad that we are giving up on a project that took us so far and that lasted for almost a year but sometimes things just become a waste of time when when you have no idea how to fix them so um yeah we will move on to making better things things that will actually work so yeah and for now see you next time and bye